Welcome to the regularly scheduled City Council meeting for August 26. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I know who's here. Is he hidden? Chair, recognize Councillor Cruz in order to make a presentation. Councillor Cruz. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, it gives me great pleasure for the second time in a month at the City Council to bring in a group of young Brocktonians who have done a great job representing us across the state and lead us farther into our title of City of Champions. We have with us tonight the under-16 girls team from the Brockton Youth Soccer Association and uh, who have just recently won the Mass Tournament of Champions under-16 girls state championship. And it's been a, uh, I know how hard they've worked. It's, uh, we had the boys under-19 team in. Uh, we may have to do a separate meeting in the next few years because I think there'll be more and more of these teams. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to invite up Coach Rob Texera so I can read this citation and he can introduce the girls. City of Brockton, Massachusetts official citation. Be it known that the Brockton City Council hereby extends its congratulations to Coach Rob Texera's U16 girls team in recognition of winning the Massachusetts Tournament of Champions 2013 U16 girls state championship. And be it further known that the City Council extends best wishes for continued success, that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Council and attested to, and a copy thereof, transmitted by the Clerk of the Council. By Timothy J. Cruz, President of the City Council, Anthony Zioli, Clerk of the uh, City Council. Thank you very much, Coach. I just want to say uh, thank you very much uh, to all my coaches, my girls especially, and the parents. And this is very special for us and Brockton. Thank you very much. If each of the girls, if each of the girls stand with the names uh, uh, read. Okay, great. Okay. Um, these are my assistant coaches, um, John Coelho. My other assistant coach, Nick Fernandez. Of, uh, my team manager, Mary Lou, she's the best. <laughs> my, my other team manager, Robin Texera. <laughs> now we'll get to my girls. Uh, my captains are Mariah Texera, my daughter. Um, another captain, Nicole Fernandez. And my third captain, Lexi Valls. Next is Amanda Almeida. Lara Andre. And Brianna Andre. Mrs. Erin Best. Tiana Bugs Bunny Brooks. <laughs> Serena. Very tall, Caleb. <laughs> Nadia, the best smile, Tadosa.
Oh, here's my goalie. She's unbelievable. Bianca Costa. Um, Michaela Norman. Maya Powers. Karina Rosa. <laughs> Stephanie Sokol. <laughs> okay, and the smallest and the shortest, but the fastest, Yasmina Texera. Those are my girls. I think. Thank you so much for having us here. I really appreciate it. We're going to take a quick recess so that they can take some pictures.
Ready? Thank you, and we're back festival. in session. What time Pass with the Napoli. Mr. President, thank you. I know, I know. Mr. President, I'd like to move items one and two under the suspension of the rules. Second. Can, you, it's, where is Can it? you act on them tonight, please? It was that collectively also? Yeah, collectively, yes. Motion was made and seconded to take items one and two under suspension of the rules collectively and act on them this evening. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion approved. Mr. Clerk, would you read items one and two? The appointment of Stephen Montero to the rank of fire lieutenant in the Brockton Fire Department. The appointment of Joseph A. McDonough to the rank of fire lieutenant in the Brockton Fire Department. Question comes in adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Yes. Ionary. Yes. Ellen. Yes. Yes. Petty. Yes. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. The appointments are approved. Mm -hmm. Council Dinapoli. Uh, move for reconsideration in hopes it doesn't prevail. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded for reconsideration in the hopes it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? Mm -hmm. Reconsideration fails. Good. Uh, now, Lieutenant uh, Montero and Captain Lieutenant. Captain Lieutenant. Councils will be in a brief recess.
Officials, we're back in session. Microphones are on. Yeah. Item number three. The appointment of Michael F. Dosh, 138 Birchview Avenue, Brockton, as a trustee of the War Memorial Building, yeah. City of Brockton, for three-year term ending August 2016. Refer to finance. Monica Vaz Trevaris, 573 North Montello Street, as a member of the Brockton Cultural Council, three-year term ending August 2016. Refer to finance. Appointment of Sandra J. Proctor, 140 Colonel Bell Drive, Brockton, for the uh, Housing Authority, Board of Commissioners, for a term of five years ending 2018. Refer to finance. And of Paul Sullivan, East Ashland Street, Brockton, License Commission, for a term of three years ending August 2016. Refer to finance. The appointment of William Sharnick, uh, Wareham, as a constable of the City of Brockton, three year term. Refer to finance. The appointment of Paul Sullivan, uh, East Ashland Street, Brockton, Planning Board, for a term of five years ending 2018. Refer to finance. Report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of August 19, 2013. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Assistant City Auditor certifying that the balance of the Stabilization Fund as of August 20, 2013 is $6,058,605.70. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws in order to finance the proposed cost of the contract settlement with Local 144, the Inter International <coughs> Association of Firefighters, covering Fiscal 11, 12, 13, recommending the following appropriation from the Stabilization Fund of $1,896,000 to Fire Department Personal Services, other than overtime, $1,740,000, and Fire Department overtime, $156,000. <coughs> Furthermore, in order to fund the proposed fiscal <coughs> cost of a separate contract settlement with the same union for the period of fiscal 14, 15, and 16, also recommending an additional appropriation from the Stabilization <coughs> Fund. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the uh, Mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws recommending the City Council appropriate $100,000 from the Office of the Attorney General Grant for Distressed Properties Identification and Revitalization to Office of the Mayor Fund for Distressed Properties Identification and Revitalization. Chapter and placed on file. Communication from the CEO-FO relative to, to the same. Chapter and placed on file. Communication from the DPW Commissioner requesting an appropriation any amount of $2,029,399 in order to expend funds under the provisions of Mass General Laws Chapter 90, Fiscal 2014, awarded to the City of Brockton for the purpose of design and construction costs for approved projects. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Chief of Police requesting authorization authorization to expend grant monies related to fiscal 14 public safety answering point and regional emergency communication center support an incentive grant in the amount of three hundred and fifteen thousand five hundred eighty six dollars accepted and placed on file communication from the mayor recommending the same accepted and placed on file from the CFO relative the same accepted and placed on file communication from the chief of police requesting that the city council accept and expend a donation in the amount of four thousand eight hundred fifty dollars for national grid for school <coughs> communication Project. The money will be used for radio equipment upgrades at two of the middle schools. Accepted and placed on file. Location from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Location from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted yeah. and placed on file. Location from the assistant city auditor certifying the balance of the park and authority meter reserve for appropriation as of August 15, 2013 is $735,347.88. Accepted and placed on file. Location from the executive director of the park and authority requesting a transfer of $8,250 from city lots to fund the lease of property at 46 Montello Street, which will be used to accommodate parking patrons displaced by the Trinity Project. 
Accepted and placed on file. Application from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Application from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Application from the director of emergency management agency requesting acceptance and expenditures of the grant from fiscal 2012 EMPG grant in the amount of $22,030. The end date for this contract is May 31st, 2014. Yes. No goods services may be procured That's after this date. Right. Accepted and placed on file. Application from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Application from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Application from the Captain of Operations Divisions of the Police Department requesting authorization to expend grant monies related to the Executive Office of Health and Human Services Fiscal 2014 Jail Division Grant in the amount of $45,000. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have an appropriation of $88,790.40 from the Plymouth County District Attorney's Office Fiscal 12 Justice Assistant Grant to the Brockton Police Fiscal Justice Assistance Grant. <coughs> In Council, July 22, 2013, ready to refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Bois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Mellon. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Levin and the affirmative. The order is adopted. Appropriation of $44,000 from Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Executive Office of Public Safety, Year 6 Local Action Research Grant to Brockton Police Year 6 Local Action Research Grant. In Council, July 22, 2013, referred to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Mellon. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. <coughs> yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The order is adopted. Appropriation of $5,600 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Highway Safety Division, Fiscal 2013 Traffic Enforcement Grant, the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 11 Traffic Enforcement Grant Fund. In Council, July 22, 2013, ready to refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Macmillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Order that the Brockton City Council act in behalf of the City of Brockton does hereby accept a grant a permanent easement for water purposes from the Mass Electric Company, Massachusetts Corporation. In Council. July 22, 2013. Uh, I'm strike that. Ready to refer to the Committee on Finance, July 22, 2013. <coughs> Recommended favorably. Question is on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Macmillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Kudinski. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Resolve that due notice be given to Antonio Pires of Pires Brothers Automobile, <coughs> Inc., that he is requested to appear before a committee of this council to discuss issues relative to violations of the conditions of the motor vehicle repair license granted for the premises located at 13 Watts <coughs> Street. End council, June 24, read and referred to the Committee on Finance. That report is unfavorable. Sure. Mr. President, <coughs> point, point, of information, point of information, can I just get more information on why it's unfavorable, this particular result? Uh, I believe at the meeting the councilors uh, voted this unfavorable, it was recommended favorably in the hopes it would not pass, uh, because this, uh, uh, Councilor Stadensky, if you could refresh me, this was in your, yes. your ward, correct? Certainly, thank you, Mr. President. It was, it was, it came out that way because the explanations and the fact of them not making an attempt to make the area safer so people can walk on the streets, vehicles can get through, and the like. Uh, I, I personally didn't feel that it was a safe item. And in the very near future, if it's not corrected in total, I'm going to have them in again. And Council Stewart, this is a resolve, so this does not affect the license, but it sent the message to the license holder that 
the council is not happy with his uh, response to, uh, <coughs> and I believe, Mr. Clark, a yes vote is, confirms the unfavorable recommendation, correct? Right. So a yes vote confirms the unfavorable recommendation? No, no, it is. No? No. <laughs> okay. So, so you want to vote no? I don't if, understand what you're saying. I'm okay, sorry. Well, that's why I was checking this. A no vote <coughs> keeps this as an unfavorable recommendation. Okay. Of the okay. I just wanted to make sure of that. Thank you. Question is on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Brophy. No. Cruz. No. Annapolis. No. Dubois. No. Ionary. No. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. No. Teddy. No. Stewart. No. Sudansky. No. Sullivan. No. Eleven in the negative. The order fails. <clears throat> Mr. President. Councillor Moynihan. I'd like to make a motion to take uh, number 42 out of order and also that we act on, the, act on it tonight under suspension of the rules. Second. Motion is made and seconded to take item 42 out of order and under suspension of the rules to act on this this evening. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, Councillors, just so you know, we do have uh, uh, Mr. Buckley, our Register of Deeds here, and uh, he will take questions on this. I'm just reading it. Um, and Mr. Jenkins from the BRA, uh, you will be able to stay in your seats if you have any questions. Mr. Clerk, could you read the order? An appropriation of $100,000 from Office of the Attorney General grant for distressed properties, identification and revitalization to Office of the Mayor, fund for distressed properties, <coughs> identification and revitalization. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Buckley, could you step up, uh, both of you, and explain to the council what this money is? and what we'll be doing with it. Sure, thank you, Mr. President of the Council. My name is John Buckley. I am the Register of Deeds for Plymouth County. The Registers of Deeds all across Massachusetts have had a great working relationship with Attorney General Coakley in terms of the foreclosure crisis that's affected Massachusetts. Brockton, as all of you know, has been very severely affected by the foreclosure crisis. There was a report out of the Mass Housing Partnership that identified uh, the, the number of gateway communities that had very severe uh, effect by foreclosures, Brockton being uh, a significant number of those census tracts. Uh, the Attorney General approached the registers and talked about some extra money that were in some settlement money available uh, for disbursement and grants. Uh, all of the registers of deeds worked together in promoting the opportunity to create a grant for those communities that applied to receive money to hire an individual uh, to promote the uh, listing and sale of foreclosed properties. Many of you know in the neighborhoods that you represent, there are a lot of properties that have been sitting vacant for three, four, five years. Um, this individual that will, Robert will explain the hiring process would be a, an advocate uh, trained by the Attorney General's office working with the registers of deeds, including myself, with our records to uh, advocate for the sale of those properties so they wouldn't sit on, on and deteriorate, they become public safety hazards and deteriorate the neighborhoods. I can get into more information if you'd like. I mean, fortunately, the, the number of foreclosure deeds has been dropping over the years. In 2010 for Brockton, there were 422 properties that were taken back by lenders. In 2011, that number dropped to 281. 275 in 2012, and uh, year to date, 93 properties have been taken over by lenders in 2013. The trend is a good direction, but there are still a lot of uh, properties left behind, and that's what this grant is for. It's a two-year grant, um, completely funding all of the uh, costs behind it, and uh, would be uh, run through the oversight of the BRA and work uh, closely with our office. So I could uh, let Robin say a few things and let, if you'd like to answer any questions. Councilors? May I let Robin speak? Mr. Jenkins, if you want to talk, talk a little bit about it for us. Excellent. My name is Robert Jenkins. I'm the Director of Housing at the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. The goal of this grant from the Attorney General's Office is to get these vacant, abandoned, or foreclosed properties into MLS back on sale uh, as you may know, a lot of these properties are not just foreclosed, but they're vacant, abandoned, distressed. The goal of this is to hire, engage an individual that will work specifically with the Attorney General's Office, the Register of Deeds, to get these properties and find out what their situation is and get them back for sale in conditions that we can sell these properties. 
I will take any questions. Council DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, gentlemen. This is some great news for the city of Brockton because all over the city and at Ward 5, 6, 7 and across the city, we have a lot of these homes. Now, under this program now, who is going to take control of uh, after uh, you're going to take control of, of, of the property, that's correct, through the registry of deeds, and, and who's going to control the sale? The control of the property will maintain with the owner, whether it's the bank, whether it's a private individual, they will maintain control. Our objective, our goal here is to get those vacant properties in a situation where they are for sale and back on the market. As you will see, a lot of the property that we've identified and even the Register of Deeds have identified through the city are just laying vacant. There's no, you have no idea who owns it. Uh, we've gone through over 400 properties just looking, trying to find out who actually owns it through the receivership program, even through um, some of the homeowner rehab programs that the BRA operates. We've identified houses that are vacant and we still cannot maintain who the owner is whether it's controlled privately or whether it's controlled by the bank. But to answer your question, it will maintain with the owner. Our job, or this individual's job, will be to find out and to get the owner, push the owner, whether it's bank or privately held, to get that property onto MLS mass listing to be sold. No. Thank you. This is a great thing and a great step in the right direction to bring the city forward. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Council Stewart. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, yes. uh, um, good program. Question about the process of identifying this person. I've been on this qualifications, credentials mantra for some time and I uh, was a bit dismayed to learn that for the junior planning position, uh, I believe we only had three candidates apply uh, for that position, if I'm not mistaken, and I was um, a, a bit uncertain how aggressive the marketing of that position was. I know that role was not placed on the Mass Municipal Association website where a lot of individuals were interested in city jobs. Um, and I, so I just, so what's the strategy for I, making certain that we get I don't get know the word about out? the planner or junior planner's position, yep. but this is a work service agreement, a contract position. Uh, we will advertise in the enterprise. Uh, the pay scale will start at 45000 It's only $100,000 for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, the Redevelopment Authority through Community Development Block Grant will match certain funds or certain activities as far as travel because there is going to be training by the AG's office. I have a question, though. So, sure. just, so in terms of the, I mean, because most, if you're looking at active and passive candidates, out there, you know, folks are using LinkedIn, there are other social, Indeed, and other Idealist, the Mass Municipal website, some other venues. So if we're just posting positions on the city website and the enterprise, I just, I'm just not confident that's aggressive enough to get the best sure. talent to apply for the jobs. So who's, who's managing the promotion of the position? Is it your office? The advertising of the will be the BRA, correct. And if you have ideas, I mean, LinkedIn is a very good source. You can go to Facebook, of course. But we're really looking for a certain type of individual that really needs to be aggressive, someone with legal background, title searches, um, real estate experience. We're looking for that type of person because the person really does have to be aggressive, um, just can't take the first, um, as, well, as I say, the first kind of trigger you'll contact or you'll make contact with the owner, whether it's a bank, and you won't get a response. So you gotta go beyond that. Then you have to send out a letter probably through the AG's office, if not the Register of Deeds office, requesting information in the status and the future of said property. Uh, so this person, that we're really looking for a person who is going to be, excuse my expression, a real dogged, individual to go after the owner, whether it's a bank, whether it's privately held, it really doesn't matter. Our goal here is to get these properties back on the market. Well, so I, 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 had, I listed some examples that I, where I think sure. you may be able to find uh, a larger pool of sure. those kinds of individuals. And it's not just the, this particular posting. It's, it just came to my attention that I, I'm not sure what the city's and, and its collaborators uh, what, what our marketing strategy is for getting the best talent, because clearly just promoting it in the local paper is not Usually, the best practice. So, Well, uh, let's just say that's not getting it. You're not getting the full bang for you're your not, buck by just not. doing it in the enterprise. Okay, great. All right. 
Right. Thank you. That's yeah, and, and a great program, and excited that uh, you're um, part of the leadership team on this. And I know you have a lot of experience in this area and have done some great things. So excited that that person will be in your office. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Dubois. Thank you. Hello, how are you doing? I'm well, and yourself? I'm good, I'm good. Um, so I know that there are quite a few properties in Ward 6 that are vacant and owned by banks and God knows who, and they're a mess. Um, do you have a list of those homes? I do, not on me per se. No, no, no. I know the ones, if you're talking Ward 6 in particular, only because just last week we did a site visit of seven properties in Ward 6. Yes, yes. So could you email me um, the full list of properties? Absolutely. And how many are on that list? <laughs> probably closest on our current list, probably active list, about 78 properties throughout the city. And what, how do you define our current list? What does that mean? Um, that we're actively pursuing some type of action, whether it's through receivership, whether it's through contact of the owner. Um, whether That's it's great. actually going out and actually looking at the property to ensure that it is vacant and abandoned. That's great. Could I have that list? And do you have a bigger list? There is a list of when we first started the program, when I started in 09 through code enforcement, and that list probably consists of some 300, 400 properties. Are you on the group that, um, that are you, is your organization at all involved with um, registration of vacant properties correct yes so we are. that's been going on for what like a year now oh uh, the city council passed that two years ago yeah so it's so, been but how long have you had someone on your staff doing that about a year and a half okay and so that has some kind of database right oh, yeah that has a huge list. could i have an excel spreadsheet of that absolutely I, can... I would love it electronic sure. but i'll take it um hard copy if that's easier um, and i think my fellow counselors would like that too that'll be actually great and actually one of the responsibilities for this individual will be to report not just to the attorney general's office register of deeds in the bra but also to the mayor's office in this council um, they will be requesting and giving at least quarterly updates to this council. And what's the salary? On the, on salary the will start out at 45. Um, okay, is this oops. a full-time position at 45? Well, this is not a, a full-time as per se hours. This is a task-orientated okay, service good. agreement. Great, So that because it's going to be difficult to find a prof the professional that you're describing that will work full-time for $45,000 a year, sure. though. But this is a task <laughs> service okay. Uh, agreement that mm -hmm. we will have with this individual certain tasks they will have to do and complete that we have a good. list I mean uh, register uh, Buckley has a list of 47 properties approximately John just so so you know counselor if you go on our website and you look up a property address of the previous owner you can find out whether that property has been taken back by the lender foreclosure deed you can track it yourself uh, for everyone's interest, we have a training uh, room down in Plymouth that meets the first Thursday of every month. You can learn how to use your system, and although I'm sure the list will be more helpful, you can certainly uh, go online and check it out yourself. You know, I think that's a great thing, and maybe some Thursday that I have off, I'll try to make it down for that training, because I have gone onto your site before, and I've gotten to a point, but I think that I would just need to know more of the ins and outs to get more um, value out of it. Yeah, but, but in answer to a previous comment on who owns it, once the property has been foreclosed upon by a lender, it's the lender's responsibility. They own that property, and that's who the target of this project is. All right, so when do you think you'll be having um, interviews and when do you think this person will be on board? What, do you, what is your time frame? What, what are you hoping for, you guys? Time frame, it's really up to this council. Once you pass and accept this order, we will then seek and put together a work service agreement for this individual and then advertise, whether it's through the enterprise, LinkedIn, uh, electronically, word of mouth, um, and get folks in. We'd like to have this person actually hired would have been nice September 1st, but we probably looking at at least 30 days. Could you send that to me? I know many um, housing legal services attorneys that are looking for work. Those are the, so thank absolutely. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Council McMillan. Mr. President. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Jenkins. Good evening, Good evening, Mr. Buckley. How are you? Um, you said you identified 78 uh, properties. How many could you not identify and who the owner is? Um, In the, wow. Is there a lot? 
our initial list from the start of this program, Councilman, probably uh, through the last four years, we've gone through probably close to 250 that you, properties you that you cannot we, identify who owns it we've identified or some action was taken I can't okay. say that we didn't identify because sometimes we send out a letter to the from the AG's office Attorney General's office right. that will spur the owner oh, yeah. to do something right. to sell to rehab to do okay. something right then those properties what we consider our successes so uh, are there any properties that you have no clue sure who owns it? the I would probably say the a f number of properties that are on uh, register Buckley's list we don't know at this point in time are the, are the but taxes we, being paid on those properties though or no probably not um, if it's a bank usually the banks will pay so if it's right. foreclosed yes the taxes are probably being paid but if it hasn't been foreclosed and it's just vacant no probably so is that, is that list of taxes not being paid and, and you can't identify the the owner is that being sent to the city so we can probably maybe take it over um, I would say there is a list, going back to Councillor uh, Dubois, there is a list of, reg un of registered property that I'd probably say only maybe 60% have registered, the other 40% have not registered. Uh, could be because we don't know or we send the letters out through the building department. They don't necessarily uh, get to the proper owner. It could just be, once again, it could just be a absentee landlord, could just be an owner, just could be, you know, the property is just vacant, abandoned once again, but that's a big list. That's over right. 400 properties. I mean, I'm just my, I'm, I'm just keying in right now on the properties that are abandoned, not being taxes not being paid for, and if they're not being paid for, then the city should be taking those over, and then hopefully we can flip them and make the money on them. But you know, I'm just wondering if these 78 properties they are identified owners. Uh, for the most part, we have. I would say yes, identified the owners. We've sent letters out through the AG's office. Whether or not we've gotten a response back is a totally different question. Uh, Mr. Buckley, I'm sorry. What is the process and how long do they have to go without paying tax before we as a city will take it over well, or could take it over? Tax title is a different issue than foreclosure. So you, you really have to get your uh, city treasurer in to talk about okay. the process that they use. But um, there are a lot of foreclosed properties that people don't pay their taxes because they're just trying to make a mortgage payment to stay in the house, right. as you know. But, um, but I'm talking about these un unidentified property owners to who haven't been paid, paying the taxes, and that's, in, that's an abandoned in, property. In my, in my opinion, yeah. uh, I don't think there is an unidentified owner because in our record system, it's, the title is in somebody's name. Right. But, uh, and again, uh, we have sent out um, we, we opened this new training room. We've sent it around to all the municipalities and so people can have ease of access to our records and certainly any of the councils and any of your department heads that would uh, you know, get, like to get more involved in that kind of research, okay. we can help out. All right. But uh, one other thing I want to mention, the Attorney General's office, uh, and this is why we really need to move forward quickly on the hiring, is going to be training all of these individuals and. In, um, Brockton got one of the largest grants, but there are going to be about 14 to 15 communities that are be, going to be hiring individuals. They're going to train them. They're going to give them access to the regional REO um, people for the major banks. And the Attorney General's office has committed, if they do not respond to this individual, that list by that individual will then go forward to receivership. If not receivership, there'll be another lawsuit filed by the Attorney General against okay, that good. bank. All right. So there's a lot of, of a stick behind the. Are we, are we um, right now late in doing this in the other communities? Because we're in the summer session and you, you know, we had to wait to the end of this month. Yes. Okay, yes. I just, I'm just curious. So uh, motion to move it as well. On the suspension, I understand that, but okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. <clears throat> thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. I want to thank you for being here tonight, and this this is a, a great thing for the city of Brockton. And uh, Mr. Jenkins, in terms of the AG's office and the receivership program, it's always been my understanding that there's been a, a, a certain uh, assistant AG assigned. I think he used to be Attorney Dan Les, who lives over in Easton, and I know there's been a, a reorg with the AG's office in terms of territory. The person that's going to be hired, are they going to be working with that specific assistant AG? Correct. They'll, okay. They'll, more than likely, they'll be working with 
attorney Dan Les from the attorney. It is General Dan. Office. Okay. It is okay. Dan Les. But more closely, they'll be working with uh, our Register Buckley and getting that information, and also, as I said, Attorney General's office directly. Okay. Okay. And uh, and I'd be remiss to uh, to not remind everybody we're very fortunate to have uh, Attorney John Buckley as the Register of Deeds. He, he serves Plymouth County, but he lives here in the city of Champions in Brockton. So we're lucky to have John. And if you ever had the opportunity to go to, uh, under his watch, uh, the old district court, 155 West Elm Street, it's really an amenity to the city of Brockton. It's the satellite office. But if you do want to journey down, and I did it, to Plymouth to see the registry deeds, it's almost like a museum down there. And John will give you a tour, and it's really wonderful. So, John, kudos to what you're doing. You're a great example of a public servant. So thank you. And thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Mr. you. President. Mr. President. Councilor Petty. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Jenkins. What happens on day 731? Um, in the two years it's over, uh, this person's job is through, well, will there be money for another reappropriate, requested for another reappropriation, or does everything just go away that was worked on the previous two years? Hopefully it just doesn't go away, but the key here is, is really, in two years, we really hope to, I think our grant set to have at least 50 properties just based on this program, back on MLS, municipal, uh, the uh, listing, the multi-listing services for sale, 50 properties throughout Brockton is actually a, a good number for two years. And I think we kind of underestimate it, but I think we have enough inventory of vacant, abandoned property that 50 is a good number for this individual to shoot for or for us to shoot for. Because as I said, there's, the registered listing, there's the AG's listing, and then there's the city's listing. This person has a lot of, uh, property isn't the issue. The issue is, is how quickly can they move and get this stuff back and the folks who are looking to buy. As you know, and I think John can attest to, there's a shortage, there's supposedly a shortage of available housing. Well, there's not a shortage of vacant abandoned housing in this city. We have a lot of it and we need to move it. And so, this person, and so this person will have the tools that will enable them to speed through processes that right now many people have experienced that are just in a quagmire and they can't go from here. E even the conventional banking methods Correct. are slow. Absolutely. So this person will be able to just go right through that? That's what we're hoping. Okay. That is a, I mean, even the BRA, we get into a quagmire. That's why we've moved through so many properties is because you hit a wall and then you kind of you don't want to spend your wheels just chasing one property. So we just move to the next one and we kind of focus on vacant property. Is there any idea of the homes, uh, the 78, I think that you mentioned, is there a dollar value on that? Oh. What, like 50,000 average per home. Will this bring in three and a half million in sales, four million, one million? If we can do idea? 50, just my opinion and just guessing, you're going to be over 15 million easily just in moving some of these properties, especially those that are in the better wards. Um, I hate to say it, but there are some wards, uh, Ward 6, the, when we did the tour. Uh, Everybody loves to live in Ward 6. It is a great ward. I oh, love We saw there. seven properties, I'm five of which you. were on Huffington. We have a very low crime rate. Um, to Except move those properties, to get them into the receivership program, <laughs> would be one, good for the neighborhood, good for the neighbors, good for the city. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Moynihan. Entertain a motion. Uh, make favorable recommendation. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to recommend, uh, excuse me, to approve. Approve, sorry. Uh, Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. 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 Pioneer. Yes. McMillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. 11 in the permit. The order is adopted. Councilor Brophy. Move for reconsideration. The hopes that it does not prevail. Motion made and seconded uh, for reconsideration in the hopes it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? Reconsideration fails. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Council. Order that the City Council accept and expend a donation in the amount of $4,850 from National Grid for a school communication project. The money will be used for radio equipment upgrade at two of the middle schools. Refer to finance. What if DPW was authorized to issue a sewer connection to the property located at plot 33 North Cary Street, book 43439, page 339? Uh, refer to finance. 
Transfer of $8,250, parking meter reserve fees, parking authority purchase of services. Refer to finance. Appropriation of $2,029,399 of available funds, Rockton Chapter 90 apportionment for fiscal 2014 to highway transportation project funds, <coughs> fiscal 14, Chapter 90 projects. Councilor Ranieri. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, and members of the uh, council, as you know, this is the Chapter 90 monies that we've been waiting for for the last, uh, I think, several months. And as you know, each and every year we wait for this money to come into the city so that we can do road work and street repair, which I'm sure all of you know as ward councilors and as councilors that, that a lot of those things happen right within our own uh, our ward. So this evening, uh, councilors, I'd like to take this uh, item and suspend the rules and act on it this evening so that we can go to work and get these streets going. If not, we're going to go off to the finance meeting, uh, which will be September 16th. It'll be the end of September um, before it gets approved, and we'll be into October. Second. Second. And, Second. and that makes it a, makes a difficult. Motion made and seconded to take item number 43 this evening and act on the suspension of the rules. All those in favor? Opposed? So moved. Uh, question is on adoption. Mr. Uh, Clerk, would you please call a roll? Roll fee. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. McMillan. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Sedinsky. Yes. yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Appropriation. Councilor Ianieri. I move for reconsideration. Hope it does not prevail. Second. Motion made and seconded for reconsideration in the hopes it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration. All those opposed. Reconsideration fails. Appropriation of $315,586 from the Mass Executive Office of Public Safety and Security 911 Department Grant to City of Brockton Police Department Regional Emergency Communications Center Support and Incentive Grant Fund. These funds will be used to backfill both ETD and police dispatchers' wages incurred from 812 13 to 6 30 14 for any associated overtime costs to replace the same personnel as well as funds to install a recently purchased ETD computer consoles. Refer to finance. Appropriation of $22,030 from the Mass Emergency Management Agency Performance Grant Program to Brockton Emergency Management Agency. The Brockton Emergency Management Agency intends to use these grant funds for installation of satellite receivers, radios, multiplexes, antennas, and associated cables. Refer to finance. Appropriation of $45,000 from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, Mass Department of Mental Health, Police Base Jail Diversion Grant for Fiscal for 2014, City of Brockton Police Department Jail Division Grant Fund. Refer to finance. Appropriation totaling $3,596,000 from the Stabilization Fund to Fire Department Personal Services other than overtime, fire, <coughs> fire Department Overtime in order to fund the proposed fiscal 14 cost of a separate contract settlement with the same union for the period of fiscal 14, 15, and 16, also recommending an additional appropriation from the stabilization fund of $1,700,000 to fire department personal services other than overtime, $1,585,000, fire department overtime, $115,000. The parties have agreed that both contracts must receive funding approval for the provisions of either contract to be effective. Active. Refer to finance. Resolved that the representative of the National Grid be invited to appear before a committee of this council to discuss emergency preparedness. Refer to finance. Resolved that the mayor, the library director, the chairman of the board of library trustees, the superintendent of the buildings, the chairman of the library foundation be invited to appear before a committee of this council to provide information on planned improvements to the West Branch Library. Refer to finance. Resolved that due notice be given to Luisa Rodriguez as owner and premises located at 649 Warren Avenue and as holder of a motor vehicle repair license operating under the name of A and B Auto Repair that she is requested to appear before a committee of this council to discuss issues relative to the conditions of the premises at 649 Warren Avenue possible zoning violations at 649 Warren Avenue and violations of the condition of the motor vehicle repair license granted for the premises located at 649 Warren Avenue. Refer to finance. 
resolved that the Mayor, Building Commissioner, and a representative from National Grid come before the Finance Committee to discuss and outline the installation process and to explain the reasons for the significant time delay <laughs> pertaining to the air quality monitoring system to be located at the Buckley Parade Ground outside Gilman School, located within the city. Refer to finance. Councilor DiNapoli. Oh, thank you, Mr. <laughs> President. I have a motion to accept the late file. Second. second. Motion made and seconded to accept the late file. All those in favor? Opposed? Late file is accepted. Is it in the hands of the clerk? Yes, Mr. President. Robin? An appropriation of $125,000 from the Massasoit Community College grant for design service for intersection improvement to DPW Project Fund for improvements at Crescent Street, Quincy Street, and Massasoit Boulevard. Refer to finance. We have a communication from the mayor recommending the city council authorize the mayor to execute an agreement with Massasoit Community College for improvements of the intersection, Crescent Street, and the college entrance, and appropriate $125,000 from the Massasoit Community College grant for design services for intersection improvement to DPW Project Fund for improvements at Crescent Street, Quincy Street, Massasoit Boulevard. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Any other business councilors? Mr. President, point of, Stewart. point of personal privilege. I uh, just want to point out that this Sunday um, was <coughs> an incredible ceremony at um, one of our local churches, and the mayor and I had the privilege of speaking, and I know my colleague, Councilor Dubois, was in, in attendance, and it was an interfaith celebration in words and music uh, for the 50th anniversary of, the Mar of Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Uh, and I was, uh, and first of all- In the March on Washington. And, which is the, you know, at the National Mall, 50th anniversary. And um, I, first of all, my cell phone crashed. Everyone knows I love Facebook, and I was not able to post things um, on Facebook while the event was happening. But I wanted to really thank the uh, coalition of churches that put this event together, because if it weren't for their efforts, uh, we may not have had the opportunity to celebrate, celebrate this important milestone here in Brockton. Uh, the sponsoring congregations were uh, Christ Congregational Church, Central United Methodist Church, Messiah Baptist Church, Pearl Street United Methodist Church, Prince of Peace Lutheran Church, Temple Beth Amuna, Trinity Baptist Church, Tri Parish Communities of St. Edestine, Christ the King and Our Lady of the Lords, Universalist Unitarian Church of Brockton, and the community sponsors uh, included the Brockton Interfaith Community, Stonehill College, and, and Crescent Credit Union. It was just a fantastic and fabulous event with, uh, I mean, as I said at the event itself, um, there were so many standing ovations that were so well deserved and was just uh, proud to be a part of that function and again, happy that the congregations in the city came together to host that event. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councilor. Mr. President. Councilor Monaghan. Councilor Privilege, please. You may. Uh, on Monday, September 9th, we'll be having an ordinance committee meeting at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Witness members. Councilor Brophy. Thank you, Mr. President. Point of personal privilege. You may. I uh, just want to remind folks if you're uh, around this weekend on Saturday, August 31st, from 11 to 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., over at the, uh, the, the Salisbury Park on uh, Crescent, uh, Montello, and White Avenue, the Arts and Music Festival will be held. And also, in conjunction with that, the Brockton Library Foundation will be conducting a, a book sale. So if you have time this weekend, it's a, always a great event, and uh, hopefully people can make it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. President, moment of personal privilege. You may, Councilor. I wanted to, uh, as we all know, the, uh, the city was uh, impacted by uh, some tragic violence last week. But I think uh, what was shown Saturday morning, uh, myself, I know Councilor MacMillan and Councilor Stewart, we all participated in the, in the walk, the uh, community peace. Uh, walk, uh, which was uh, well, well, well attended, over 300 walkers, and it was a beautiful day, and I think it was a, 
a great reflection of what um, the citizens of the city of Brockton can do when we have a, a consorted effort. So I just want to thank the uh, individuals that planned that. I know it was Mr. Jacob Tagger and Mr. Nick Fernandes, and I really, uh, I was proud to march that day, and I do think I walked a little faster than Mac Mellon. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Who can't? Thank you. <laughs> Council, just a reminder, we're still on summer session, and finance will be on September 18th. Thank you. We're adjourned. 18th or 16th?